Welcome viewers once again to another exciting mini PC review. Today I have an exciting new mini PC from the brand Geekcom and they have decided to send their latest model for their upcoming Easter egg hunt promotion as well as for a full in-depth review for my beloved fans. Details about the promotion can be found in the description below. This is the Geekcom IT8 Intel Core i5 Windows 11 mini PC. This compact mini PC provides power, functionality, with modern features for you to expand beyond Windows into other operating systems such as Linux, Android x86 and Fido OS. So if you are excited about what this mini PC can do, stick around, my full review is up next. Welcome back. In this package contains the mini PC itself, one HDMI cable, a 19V 4.7A 90W DC power supply, a power cable for the power supply, a bracket for mounting to the back of your TV or monitor, along with a pack of screws, you have a quick setup guide and a carrying case. For design and input-output peripherals, to the top of this mini PC has a detachable plastic cover to gain access to the four chassis screws in the event you need to remove the mainboard or cooling fan. To the rear face inside of this PC has one HDMI port, a Type-C display port, two USB 3.2 generation 2 ports, one RJ45 gigabit LAN port, a mini display port, a DC power port and you have the exhaust vent for the internal cooling fan. To its left has a standard size SD card slot and a mesh vent for intake air cooling. To its right has another mesh for intake cooling and a Kensington lock. At the front you have another USB 3.2 port, a Type-C data only port, a headphone microphone combination jack and an LED power button. And below the PC you have a metal plate with screw holes for mounting to the included bracket. You also have four chassis screws that you can remove to gain access to its M.2 SSD, its RAM module slots, and the SATA expandable storage facility. So I'll now set this up on a 4K TV and capture card and continue. If you would like to mount this mini PC to the back of your TV or monitor, you will need to follow the directions in the quick start guide. With the included bracket, you need to attach it with the arrow facing upwards and with the included screws attach it to the monitor. Then on the bottom panel of the mini PC, there are two elevated screws you will need to attach. These will slide into the slots on the bracket. Once this is done, simply line up the screws with the cutout holes and slide it downwards to snap it into place. Then attach your HDMI cable, DP cable or Type-C cable to your display whichever it uses. Then attach the power cable and your keyboard and mouse and you're ready to go. This mini PC comes with Windows 11 pre-installed. So when you boot up for the first time, you will be greeted with the Windows 11 first startup wizard where you will be asked to connect to your home Wi-Fi internet network and log in to your Microsoft account before you are taken to the Windows desktop screen. So I've successfully booted into Windows and before I get started with testing the performance of this machine, let's first take a look at its system and hardware information. Its basic system information shows that its SoC processor is an Intel Core i5-8259U CPU with a base clock speed of 2.3GHz. It has 16GB of RAM and it's a 64-bit operating system. If you scroll down on the product key and activation, it shows that Windows is activated. For a bit more details, the Ada 64 Extreme app shows that the CPU is a quad-core CPU with a boost clock speed of 3.6 GHz. If we take a look at the Intel CPU page, it shows that this CPU has 4 cores and 8 threads with a boost clock speed of 3.8 GHz. It's an 8th generation CPU with 6MB of Intel's smart cache. 
This model comes with a single module of Kingston 16GB 3200DDR4 SD RAM and the system can facilitate up to 32GB via two 16GB modules. The GPU component of the SoC is an Intel Iris Plus 655 with a base frequency of 300 MHz and a max dynamic frequency of 1.05 GHz. The GPU has access to the same 16 GB of RAM as the CPU and has a max resolution of 4K at 60 Hz. The audio adapter is an Intel Kaby Lake HDMI with support for audio, voice and speech. For system disk, it has a Kingston 512M.2 NVMe SSD and here you can see it detects the 1TB Western Digital SATA SSD I installed. On the network, it shows that it has dual band adapters for the 2.4 and 5GHz bands. It also shows that it has Bluetooth support. And here is the BIOS information. Here are some of the Windows features you get with this model. As mentioned, you get 4K 2160p resolution up to 60Hz. You get HDR display with the option to set it to Auto HDR. You get dual monitor display via the HDMI and mini display port. You get screen orientation to portrait mode. This is mostly used when advertising on vertical monitors that you see at malls and convenience stores. And it has Bluetooth connectivity. For audio, it has 7.1 speaker configuration that delivers Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, DTS-HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround and Dolby True HD Surround Sound Audio Output. However, in order to get DTS-X and DTS-HD Master Audio, you have to install the DTS Sound Unbound app from the Microsoft Store. Also. One thing to note is that these speaker options only become available when you connect to a surround sound system such as a sound bar or a 5.1 to 7.1 audio receiver. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful movie. The Geekcom IT8 is great at Office applications where you can use it to edit documents such as Word, Excel spreadsheets, and PowerPoint presentation. And it's surprisingly great at editing videos in 1080p and 4K. Speaking of which, 4K HDR videos play smoothly on this mini PC without the need for additional codecs or media players such as VLC. My list of 4K HDR videos played smoothly with HDR display on my LG TV. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head to head goal difference is what counts in the case.
for streaming movies from premium services, the IT8 has full HDCP 2.2 protection which allows services such as Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime Video to show in HD and 4K quality via their dedicated app from the Microsoft Store or through your favorite browser. You also get surround sound audio such as Dolby Atmos from those apps that use it such as Netflix. Believe it or not, some of your favorite streaming APK services have started to venture into Windows apps. For those that I know of, you have TTV Windows version and Streamio beta version. I had no luck with the TTV version getting it to work, but the Streamio Windows version works exactly like the Android version with your login details. For more alternative streaming options, the Windows version of the Kodi Media Player is also available and I was able to install all my add-ons in one click from my backup file. The only difference with the Windows version is that after you restore your add-ons and restarted Kodi, you need to go into the My Add-ons section and enable each one manually for it to appear in the add-ons main tab. For information on how to create your own backup and how to restore, see the link to my tutorial in the description below. For PC gaming, it performs pretty good at resolutions of 720 and 1080p on medium to high settings. At 4K 60Hz, it starts to struggle a bit to render and experiences some dropped frames. This is Destiny 2, a 79GB game from the Steam platform and it plays smoothly when set to 1080p resolution on medium graphic settings. For those interested in emulation gaming, here I installed the PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator with the video resolution set to 720p and with 8-bit textures enabled. At this resolution, I can play Devil May Cry 2 smoothly. However, if I set it to 1080p or even 4K, it starts moving very choppy. And now, a look at its benchmarks and where it places on my rankings chart. First, its RAM copy speed and its M.2 SSD read and write speeds. Its 16GB of DDR4 has a RAM copy speed of 30,425MB per second. Its M.2 SSD has a read speed of 1,432MB per second and a write speed of 2,551. These scores are really good compared to other mini PCs on my chart. Next, the results from the test performed on its Wi-Fi bands and its Gigabit Ethernet LAN port. And it shows that on the 5 GHz band and on the LAN port, based on my internet speed of 250 megabits per second, they both achieved the maximum speed of my bandwidth. The 2.4 GHz band on the other hand that is electronically limited as is the older standard only achieved 37%. That's not to say it doesn't work properly. In the PC version of Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark, it shows that it has a base clock speed of 2.29 GHz and a boost clock speed of 3.79 GHz and it scored 936 single core and 3591 multi core. Again, according to my rankings chart, these scores are impressive. In the new Windows version of the Antutu benchmark, it scored 480,907. This is another high score and we'll see how it pans out on the rankings chart. A similar test, this time from a PC Mark 10 comprehensive benchmark, shows that it got a score of 3,833. This is the score that I use to place PCs on my rankings chart, and we'll see how it does in a moment. And from the same developer of the PC Mark 10 comes the 3D Mark Gamers GPU benchmark, and the results show that it scored 44,287 in the iStorm Extreme test. 9,579 in the CloudGate test and 622 in the TimeSpy test. 
These are all great scores compared to similar models and I use the older iStorm Extreme and CloudGate test just so that you can get a picture of these mini PCs compared to Android TV boxes because you can use mini PCs as TV boxes also. So now let's see where it places on the rankings chart. So I've entered the scores on my rankings chart and the IT8 propelled itself to position number one, taking the spot from the B-Link GTR. These positions are based on PC Mark 10 benchmark scores. If you would like to view this chart online, you can do so using the link in the description below. This chart also provides information about surround sound audio, 4K video playback, and whether it can run alternative operating systems. I also provide price comparison links right here. See the link in the description below this video. On a more interesting note, if you would like to convert this mini PC into a super powerful Android TV box by installing Android 12 on its Intel Core i5 CPU, you can do so by installing Android x86 on a hard drive or SSD connected to its expandable storage facility. This version of Android x86 is installed as a separate standalone operating system that utilizes 100% of the PC's hardware without interfering with the Windows operating system. All you need to do is to set it to boot directly to the external hard drive with the Android OS and you will have an Android TV box running on Windows hardware. This is Android 12 x86 and this version has most systems working, including Google Play services, root access with a root switch in the developer options. Its CPU is clocked at 3.8 GHz, which is twice as powerful than your standard TV box, and you get 64-bit architecture. And at this CPU clock speed, temperatures remain very low at 27 degrees Celsius due to its internal cooling fan working efficiently. The drawbacks with Android x86 is that you don't get HDCP 2.2 protection to play premium movie services in HD and 4K such as Netflix. YouTube is always limited to 1080p resolution and you don't get HDR and Vulkan support even though the GPU supports it. And there is always the issue of getting audio through the HDMI port, so it's still on the headphone jack. That's no fault of the mini PC but the operating system. Just remember, this is all experimental and a constant work in progress and they have come a long way in this development. For a more complete solution to converting this mini PC into a full-fledged Android TV box is by using the FidoS operating system. For those who may not know, FidoS is Chrome operating system that is designed to run on Windows hardware such as Chromebooks. However, FidoS has a unique component which is an Android subsystem and a Linux subsystem. The Android subsystem is fully functional with Google Play services and you can install apps directly from the Play Store or you can sideload them from external storage devices via APK downloads. So with FidoS on a powerful mini PC such as this one, converts it into an Android TV box with 4K display up to 60Hz with HDR on later versions, you get screen rotation to portrait mode. You get a beautiful user interface with custom wallpapers and app shelves. You get root access via a manual route up to version 12. Later versions have not yet been figured out. You get Netflix and all other premium movie services in HD with HDCP 2.2 protection. There is also a new Google Widevine option in the settings area. Videos are played using the Chrome OS side of the operating system on the Chromium browser and you can simply maximize the window for full screen viewing. You get YouTube in 4K 2160p resolution via the Chromium browser that you can maximize for full screen viewing. You get audio through the HDMI port without issues or any special configurations.
You can connect a Bluetooth Air mouse or a Bluetooth gamepad to navigate streaming apps and to play Android games without issues. This gives it a true TV box experience when used with apps such as Kodi and streaming APKs. And finally, with its powerful Core i5 and Iris GPU, you can play Android games on the higher settings from both 32 and 64-bit games. You can play 64-bit games with gamepad key mapping from the Panda gamepad key mapping 64-bit version. However, the 32-bit version do not work. They will work in the later versions. However, without root access, they can function. If you are a Linux user, FidoOS gives you the Linux subsystem and you have access to a terminal. So FidoOS is a very exciting development for Windows mini PCs and they are constantly updating their operating system for their customers. If you would like to learn how to access and install FidoOS, see the link to my tutorial in the description below this video. In summary. The Geekcom ID8 is a powerful mini PC that offers all the bells and whistles needed for the average user as well as for SoC enthusiasts. Those in the Android x86 and the Fire OS community will be happy to know that this mini PC is ideal for your projects. Its performance benchmarks are really good and is currently at position number one on my chart, making it one of the fastest mini PCs I've encountered. There is one thing I wish it had, and that is an additional M.2 port for expandable storage. This would have allowed you to use an M.2 NVMe instead of SATA for your projects if that's your preference. So I've come to the end of my review. Geekcom is currently hosting an Easter egg hunt promotion on their website for this mini PC where you can get discount coupons from 8% way up to 30% if you can find 6 Easter eggs scattered across their website. To take part in this promotion, simply sign up for a Geekcom account on their website, then find the 6 Easter eggs scattered across their website by browsing through different pages. Each time you find the Easter egg, click on it and it will fall into the egg shelf on the top right corner. When you have collected all all six eggs, you'll then qualify for one of the coupons for you to purchase. If lucky, you can win up to a 30% discount coupon, which means you can get this mini PC for just $164. This promotion runs from the 8th to the 12th of April 2022, so don't waste any time and join in the hunt to take advantage. See the link in the description below this video. Give this video the thumbs up if you like this mini PC and believe that it offers great value. If this is your first time tuning into my channel and there are things you don't understand or would like to know more about, then hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell to be notified about new and upcoming products in the future. Also, if there is anything you need to know about, drop me a comment in the comment section below or you can send me an email at tvboxstop at gmail.com. Thanks goes out to Geekcom for sending this mini PC for review. Show them some support and check out the promotion on their website. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.